I started when I was eight years old in Gran Canaria. And yeah, my parents had before a windsurfing school, so it was like pretty good for me. And they were teachers, so yeah, one day I decided to try it and yeah, I lived right at the beach, so <laughs> it was like the first thing I could do. And yeah, I just went out and my parents told me everything. And yeah, the first time I went out, I yeah, and never left the windsurfing gear. I went every day again, and yeah, it was great. But then with the school, it was really hard to match everything. But yeah, it was all the time after school at the beach and windsurfing. I think my first board was a plastic board, it was a Tiga board, <laughs> and I had a old small 3.0 simmer sail and then yeah I used that for beginning and I think then at the beach after half a year or something some guy I think from a yeah, good friend of mine like yeah gave me his board his old board it was a I think a proof board like or beyond Dunkerbeck board so that was my first good wave board, so I could do some little jumps, like one, two meter high, and yeah, and I went through a lot of boards. I think I had even JP and Mistra and everything, but then with 11, I think I got my first contour is Severn and Starboard, and yeah, there I was so happy. I got like a lot of stuff, and yeah, I could actually do everything that I wanted in a wave with a board. So I was so comfortable. Then, yeah, I think with 14 I went to New Pride sales and oh, my lifestyle is it's pretty cool. I, I travel a lot around the world and I can sail so much as I want. It's my job, I have to do it and I love it. And yeah, now after my work title I was invited to so many galas and had to wear sometimes a suit and it's very different than normal beach lifestyle but yeah I got used to it and don't regret it and I don't regret it, it's good. I've been now in Maui for four weeks I think and yeah I've been every day out, the whole day, every day and well, it feels a bit, yeah, it's part of my job, but sometimes I really don't want to say after four weeks every day sailing. So, sometimes it's really good to relax, but if I have to go, I go, but sometimes that's not so much fun. But, yeah, when you're in the water, you, just, you forget about all the stuff and just go. Oh yeah, if it's mast high and 30 knots, I for sure I will go out and try everything and try to do it as much as I can. Oh no, it was like the greatest trip ever for me in Australia because I never had such a long wave and it was just perfect. I had so many good turns and takas and goitas in one wave. It's like I had some waves, like 10 turns on it. And where do you get that? It's like hard, hard to get. And yeah, just I will never forget that trip. Uh, I was there with uh, Scott McCurcher, Danny Bruce, Ibaya, and John Carter. You ne never forget him. <laughs> He's a cool photo photographer. D Dieter van Dijk and also. But Scotty has the the greatest turns. So, like the yeah, everyone wants to do his turns. It's so hard, and yeah, I always watch watch how he does it, but. It's, it's impossible to do it. So, he's a good guy, he's funny. And yeah, Ibaya, she jumps good and she wave rides also good. So, 
but you don't see that so much with the women. So it's it's pretty cool to see her really ripping. So yeah, and Danny Bruges was also there. He had also great turns, good jumps, also funny personality, and yeah, it's a good team to hang out with. JC. Oh yeah, and JC. He he's the funniest photographer. I, I don't know, we, we also played some games like the loser game or the caravan game. It's funny where, where you have to watch out for caravans. If you see one, you have to shout it and yeah, you get one point. It's a bit of a stupid game, but really entertaining. <laughs> so when, when you're driving like 10 hours a day and in Australia, you have to do something. So Yeah, yeah the year 2011 was a great year for me. Uh, the first event was Pozo. I, it's my home spot. I train there every day when I can, when I'm there. And yeah, it was a hard event. I had, I was sailing there with four two three seven. It was really strong wind. And yeah, it was a hard event. So yeah, I won it. So pretty lucky, pretty good. And then afterwards, I was in Tenerife. Had good wave riding conditions. Was not big, was but was clean, and not so much wind. I was 5.0, and was a bit tricky. I never sailed there before in El Medano, so it was kind of sketchy. I was wasn't getting the good waves. As I said, I didn't know where where they find. Like Danny was finding also like really good waves, but I didn't. So it was hard. And yeah, in the final against him, it was. I was so nervous, he was getting all the ways and I just getting like nothing. But yeah, well, it was pretty good. And then afterwards, September, I was in Denmark, the coldest event for me. And yeah, there, like, if I won that event, I would have got the world title. So it was like, I had a little bit of pressure with all the media guys and all that stuff. And the most important heat was, uh, I think, in semi-finals against Victor Fernandez. And there I went like for everything, and everything worked were good. So, yeah, well, and also the event. Like, I won three events in, in a row. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Like, how does it work with The pressure thing is. It's like a bad thing for me. I don't like to be on, under pressure. So it was very hard. I had so much media around. So before the heats also they were like interviewing me or following me everywhere. Also in the rider's tent, like everywhere. Also when I was sitting in the car, like just, wow. yeah, relaxing. They were knocking on the door and trying to get an interview. Yeah, after a while, I can deal with it, but it's better like without pressure and like now they're just yeah, just completely safe for you and that's it. <laughs> Most of the time when I try some new moves, I think about it in the head like hundreds of times before I try it. It's like the same when I go jumping, when I try it and now I would try the triple loop again. So before that, I, yeah, I'm thinking about it now a whole year so when I go out it when in the water I never think about it, something so no it's oh yeah when it's like the new pride shoot when it was super windy I tried some double loop of the lip when it was mast high so yeah it was it's my jumping side so I'm used to that but with a wave with a mast high wave it's pretty hard you have to get the right moment and yeah, I tried some, like I think two I landed in front of the wave, but then the wave just completely catch me. But yeah, I think it's possible. I was super close, so I will keep trying them. And also on the big day I tried a back loop of the lip, a high one. Didn't land it also, but on the back of the wave. So just, just go and try, so I'm having fun out there. Well, in the, in the board I look for a lot of speed. I need a lot of speed for high jumps. That's why I most need in Gran Canaria. But then, 
yeah, I also need the board to be a little bit wider for doing some nice tricks in the wave. I do a lot of takas and goiters and backside 360, so this helps me a lot. And yeah, now with the code, I'm I'm super happy because I can do everything that I want. So and it works everywhere for me. Like I tried in Australia and side side offshore, and yeah, it worked good. Then also in Gran Canaria for jumping it was fast enough. Now here in Maui it was also good. So yeah, pretty happy with it. My equipment's all about going fast and a lot of power. So I need. It's uh, a fast board and Maceo is pretty powerful so it's easier to get planing and when it's onshore you need also a lot of power to get over the waves and over the white one. Just before I got here, we had a pretty strong week of wind, so it was actually really, really good to test the new Costa codes. And uh, we had like 49 knots in the gust and uh, some really good swell, really good waves. So it was just perfect to give it a hardcore test on, on the new codes and uh, behaved really well. Like, couldn't I could feel like everything I wanted to do, the board responded the way I wanted. Like if I wanted to do slide backwards, make a taka or backside 360s, all those freestyle wave maneuvers that you want to do, you can just bam, 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 it just does it. Like backside 360s and like all the, like if you want to spin out, like make a top turn and just keep sliding for a bit, then and get it back and carry on and just does it it just does what you want and uh, for jumping it has super, a lot of speed you can keep a lot of track like for any kind of jump I was I did my first push loop forwards attempts and went really well as well so yeah I'm super stoked how it went so I'm um, I think we can we're gonna have a very good very good boards out there Philip is just an amazing sailor, for one, and he can do what he does on a lot of different boards. But uh, a lot of his a lot of his style can revolve around how the boards um, allow him to do what he does, basically. And um, the codes they definitely want to project above the lip. They keep on projecting through the lip and, and allow that throw tail. Um, and they're, they're a really smooth, flowing cutback. Like you don't, you don't get the real brute acceleration and force through the turn like the quads, but they're all smooth in the way they, they, they carve through an arc. So I tried the quad sometimes, not a lot of times. I'm more the twin fin guy, but yeah, with the quad you can really do the rail to rail, really like stick on the wave and really powerful turns and without yeah, uh, slipping away. So it's a good wave riding board. I really like it for down the line. Like without, I was not really doing so many turns. Like, yeah, turns yes, but not so many takas and goiters. So yeah, I love the code for, because it's good for takas and goiters and does it much easier than with the quad. So. When I do a double loop I need not such a big wave, I need strong wind. Well, it's good to be overpowered so you get a fast rotation. And yeah, when I approach it, I, when I, approach it, I never think about it really, like what can happen. I just go and yeah when I jump I normally I go straight into a rotation to and I don't know if I've 
the eyes open or not. I never know where I am, really. I think I close my eyes when I do the move. Yeah, so... <laughs> I know my, my first double I did it with 13. And I landed it on the first day that I tried it. So, never really thought about how, how I do it. So, just straight go in. <laughs>